market and mm -hmm. the economy and stimulus. I'm joined now by my panel, Liberal MP Tim Wilson and Labor MP Ed Husick. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for having us. Tim, the coalition of former fire chiefs are again calling on the government to hold a national summit. Why won't the government agree to it? It seems like a sensible idea, doesn't it? Well, the focus should be on making sure we're providing assistance and support to those people who are facing the challenges of fires and making sure that the states who are responsible for delivering the services to support people are receiving them. The Prime Minister has been very clear in giving the support and assistance uh, to the states as is required, uh, whether it's through the use of the Defence Forces as part of a logistical capacity or also the resourcing and additional resourcing. But the, the reality is the states are responsible for fighting the fires. Not, it's not to pass the buck, we can contribute and help, but to actually try and intervene and insert ourselves in between uh, firefighters and the fires that they're trying to put out is actually not a very rational or sensible thing to do unless you're playing politics. This isn't about intervening and putting yourself, this is about dealing with the issue of climate change, which scientists say is making this bushfire season a lot more extreme. Do you agree with that analysis, that it's making well, it's, the bushfire season more extreme? And that's what they're actually wanting to tackle, not you know, anything about logistics per se. But, 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 but Patricia, you know there are multiple contributions to bushfires, of which climate is one. And though the government took a policy platform of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions to the election, and we're seeking to implement that. Now, if they wish us to discard democratic will um, because they want something else, then, of course, that's part of uh, the public discussion but we're getting on the job of cutting emissions. That's actually what we're doing. Uh, and so to have a separate summit to revisit that when we just had a big national debate about it, took it to the election, seems to me to be a bit odd. Do you think emissions should be cut further by your government? Well, we're already cutting them and we're going to continue to cut them. What we've had is... Yeah, but I asked you another question. Well, no, Do you think no, they should be cut even further? Well, well, actually, well, of course I believe they should be cut further because that's what we're actually doing. We're actually cutting emissions uh, year on year to reduce Australia's emissions profile, implementing investing in new technology and renewables uh, and other types of technology to get energy consumption down. Uh, we're doing precisely that. So do I agree with that proposition? Yes, because we're already doing it. OK. Uh, don't quite think that answers my question, but I'll, I'll go to Ed Husick, who I haven't included yet in the conversation. Ed Husick, would a national summit be just political, as Tim Wilson says, given obviously states are responsible for actually tackling these bushfires? I think what people want is to know, particularly in terms of uh, the response to these fires, is do we have the equipment? It's one thing to say that we want to provide people with support. It's another thing to, to actually have the equipment to deliver that. And, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of the fire chiefs and a lot of the people that have been involved in this and have got some build experience are saying that not enough is being done to invest. And let me just give you a contrast. Uh, in the midst of all the furious response to Medivac, where the government reopened Christmas Island and visited it, it spent $180 million doing that, roughly. In response to calls by fire chiefs to improve firefighting equipment and the availability of it, what did we get last week? 11 million. So there's money to score political points, but there's no money to save people's homes. And that's what people should be hopping mad about in terms of the coalition. And the only reason they're not having a meeting with these, with the, the people that have called for it, the people with experience, the only reason they're not holding the meetings is because they're too stubborn, too proud, and will not bend uh, in terms of responding to people who care significantly about the amount of money required, the resources required, to tackle these terrible bushfires. And they will just get worse and worse as climate change and the impact of it uh, starts to dig in even further. And we really can't afford to have a proud government. We need to have a government that's prepared to do what it takes to protect Australians from the impact of climate and the after effects in terms of these bushfires. So Ed Husick, I've got to push you on that because Labor has post-election been embracing coal in a way you didn't quite pre-election. So what does that mean for Labor and your ambitions given, you know, the scientists are saying that climate change is of course leading to this more extreme bushfire season. Do you think Labor needs to take that issue more seriously because we're seeing an embrace of coal? I think if you look at uh, our record and the passion that we apply and the ambition that we have in this area, uh, it's unquestioned uh, that we would, uh, one, take this seriously, two, mobilise the nation to be able to find better, cleaner, more efficient ways to generate 
uh, energy to reduce emissions. Uh, that is absolutely clear. Uh, was, as opposed to the coalition that are the big Kyoto cheats, uh, basically fought us for years against reducing emissions. Uh, we generate the credits through some of the stuff that had been done when Labor was in office. Now the coalition wants to claim those credits in the absence of anything meaningful that they're doing to reduce uh, emissions and have been able to secure some sort of Pyrrhic victory on the world stage in the last few hours uh, to the chagrin of many others who think that Australia, when it's capable of doing more, isn't. So, you know, Labor uh, recognises we need to do more. But if we were to um, come into the heart of your question, Patricia, if we were to stop coal exports tomorrow, do you think the coal exports wouldn't happen? No, they, it'd be obtained elsewhere and coal still has a part to play in steel making as well. We've got to be able to find though the challenge uh, for governments, for business, for many across the globe is in terms of energy generation, reduction of emissions and doing so where we can keep economy strong while seeing an improvement to the environment. Tim Wilson, I spoke to Innes Willox, uh, the head of the AI group, earlier on Afternoon Briefing, and he said the government shouldn't be hung up on a surplus because he says the economy needs a shot in the arm. He's very worried about the economy and says uh, after delivering the first surplus, which is projected, then the government should be prepared to go into the red. What's your response to that? Well, I don't think uh, that's a justifiable call at all. The reality is the government said yes it would go into an election and uh, commit to a surplus and we are going to deliver that. That gives but beyond people that. Hey, no no I know I let me let me answer it uh, which is that delivers reassurance and calm to markets and confidence from which businesses can go on and invest. If you have a government that jumps around left, right and centre uh, in response to every single economic condition, it creates uncertainty which decreases investment, which cr decreases the amount of investment to create jobs and makes economic growth harder. It's actually an irresponsible action to just call for more spending um, continuously without any sense of responsibility about how to balance the books and repay the debt and that's the approach that the government has taken because it delivers calm reassurance to the Australian economy, to investors, to grow jobs, to boost growth. Ed Husick, Innes Willocks, as I say, says the, the government should be prepared to go to the red. Should it be prepared to? I don't think the government should stake everything on a vanity project. You're uh, talking about a vanity project let, again. Let him finish. The, the, let him finish the, what he has to say. Yeah, the government has staked all on a vanity project, surplus above all else. The economy is withering. Every uh, key indicator, you saw the way it was uh, being uh, 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 tracked in my EFO uh, in terms of future growth, future unemployment, wages growth, all terrible. And what's happening right now, Patricia, is the economy is withering under the feet of the coalition who keep using the same excuse you've just heard a few moments ago, which is, we won't be panicked, we'll wait and see. Everyone has known and seen from the indicators over the last few months that the economy is flagging. When Labor called, for instance, that we bring forward stage uh, some of those tax cuts, when we bring forward serious infrastructure investment to support the economy, uh, the coalition refused to. And they certainly jumped when I said it was a vanity project to pursue the surplus. But what is the point? of reaching a surplus if the economy uh, basically starts to wither and you need to spend more than what you required before to ensure the growth is sustained. And that is the thing that people will question. This is a mess right now. The way the economy is performing is a mess of the coalition's making be, and be under no illusions whatsoever in relation to that. But this is I, just a falsity, I'm sorry. Firstly, Ed has previously called the surplus a vanity project. Well, he when, I've has. Confront, when I've confronted him about it, he's then denied it. And then today no, he's reconfirmed. Yes, I've you never did actually. It. I, I can absolutely assure you, you did. And well, we, we just, we just got him on live television know, saying so, it, so we're going to be know, good I, team. It's I, fine. No, no, I welcome his change of heart and his honesty rather no, than continuing I'm to deny it. I'm as stubborn as a mule. I have been saying this for ages. Well, I'm sorry, that's not true if you go back and look, but let's go past that. The coalition has already brought forward uh, investing in the billions of dollars on infrastructure. We have delivered massive tax cuts. Let's not forget the fact that Ed Husick went into the last election promising $387 billion of new taxes and now he's trying to argue that we should be bringing tax cuts further. What we're actually doing is providing stability and confidence to the market. Now economic conditions are challenging. No one's <laughs> trying to pretend otherwise. The global context is challenging. So do you want a government that takes okay. irresponsibility or do you want us right. to be prudent, responsible? 
responsible and deliver as the basis for people so making long-term confidence investing to, decisions. Let me return to Ed Husick. Ed Husick, yes, you used the term vanity project and I uh, can see that Tim Wilson is very excited about that. I actually want to no, ask no, a I'm question No, no, I'm just calling him out it. on his dishonesty. Well, either way, we're here Whoa. and we've heard it, we've heard it on yeah, the record. Tim. Let's yeah, just leave that there. Welcome his, I welcome him let saying Let me again. just ask him the question if I can, Tim. That's my job here. So, Ed Husek, when you call it a vanity project, does that mean that after the, the one forecast, which no doubt will be delivered, you know, that's what the government tells us will happen, that the government, in your view, should put that aside and be prepared to go into the red? Can I get some clarity? Is that what you're saying? Uh, OK. So, uh, firstly, I'm not going to have Tim... Wilson uh, suggested it, talk about dishonesty. The the grand master himself, we've seen the way he's performed through franking credit. There was nothing uh, dishonest. Give me an example. I gave you an example. And, and, Give me and an example. The, the if we could just let him finish. Is, the reality well, is, I'm sorry, I, I have dishonest. stood for quite, quite some time. I have been on the record criticising the coalition for its mad pursuit of great glowing headlines on the surplus while the economy starts to wither underfoot. And I've been saying that for some time. And the reality is that uh, surpluses should, absolutely, you should use money, uh, government, taxpayer money wisely, the revenues that are obtained, absolutely. And surpluses do have a role to play. But when you have so many indicators suggesting that the economy is not performing and is not likely to perform as well as it could, then your only uh, conclusion, the only realistic conclusion with a government that keeps deferring any action is that they're more interested in the media headline than the sustainable performance of the economy longer term. And but this is the if it dishonesty. means deferring things, and to be honest, we have already brought spending of, forward. No, we are cutting taxes. Okay, just, 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 just let him finish the sentence but so we can the, hear what he's the, saying. The, the point I make is this: there'll be a lot of people that, that get a bit jittery and nervous about the suggestion that we don't reach. Uh, surplus as quickly as what the coalition want. But as I said before, there are people, real life people, who are dependent on the economy performing well, who want to get a decent pay rise, who want to get more hours and more sustained work, who want to be able to see infrastructure work in their local area, who want to see the services that they depend upon, like the NDIS, being funded properly to help them out, and to be able to see the economy grow in a sustainable way that delivers for many. That's what is really important in terms of this discussion around a surplus. OK, just finally, uh, and there was a bit of biffo there, I'm trying to keep the sort of festive Christmas sort of vibe going on this show, you know, goodwill I for everyone. I heard Tim say bar humbug. Uh, did he? Well, there you go. No, a bit of dishonesty right there. Let's just leave that because uh, it's a good time of the year to love each other. <laughs> That's what I try to do. Just finally, Tim Wilson, we'll start with you. It's our last panel of the year with both of you, and you'll be back next year in 2020. Oh, I can't wait. What are your reflections on 2019, and what can we expect next year, very briefly? Uh, well, my reflection on 2019, it was a year where Australians faced a choice about the type of country they want to be, and they had the choice between jumping around and uh, uh, an alternative government that focused primarily on saying what it thought it had to say to win an election versus a government that was going to develop stability and security for Australians. And that's what we've delivered. What do I think you can see in 2020? I think, frankly, it's more of that. Um, there's challenges for the economy. I agree with that. Uh, and you'll be seeing um, more leadership in, in that discussion. Uh, we'll continue our plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but critically, we'll also focus on making sure we conserve national unity, because that's the basis in which we steward our economy, society, and environment for future generations. Ed Cusick, you get the final word as it turns out uh, what are your reflections and, and even predictions if I can use that word well I, I, in terms of the election itself obviously the most yeah the clearly the, the biggest thing is from a labor perspective we we're disappointed we didn't get the chance to form government and importantly do the things that we believe would help both the economy and the community uh, I, I do get a sense that uh, the economy the, the election itself was about kicking issues down the road. Uh, be it from climate change and economic and budget reform. Uh, I think we do need to, you know, have a handle on, you know, the way in which a budget uh, is uh, in, in the way that it's performing at the moment. You know, we, we pay a lot of money in concessions right now that could be more productively used to invest in the skills of our people and to support people in the way that they want and build a stronger economy. And I think uh, those issues are just going to keep coming back, climate change being the most preeminent uh, of them. Until we get serious on this issue, I think the public will uh, judge and judge harshly and rightly so. And I think that's what's got to happen longer term. We've got to, we ought to be able to confront national issues and, importantly, 
how we manage change and in, on top of that ensure that people have trust in the change process. Well I wish you both a great break and I suppose we'll do it all again in 2020. Thanks for coming on. Merry Christmas to you Thank and you. your viewers Merry and Christmas. happy Hanukkah for the 22nd to 30th of December. Yeah, and I hope Indeed. everyone has a good break whatever their faith is of course and that's Labor MP Ed Husick and Liberal MP Tim Wilson.